Hi traders, 14th September 2016, Crispin again from FX Algo Trader. Okay, this is version 4.0 Opulent Statarb system. Uh, made some changes again, constant evolution at the moment. So what I've done is added a couple of data flags into the entry control data. So if you're using a delayed entry system, you can now see a UT break flag and an LT break flag as well as the upper trigger and lower trigger entry active flags. So you can see here, this is a, an example building on the last video where we're basically trading stationary, only stationary spreads. And what we saw is the spread broke through this lower trigger channel. I'm using a really tiny STD multiple at the moment on an M1 chart. So there's hardly any reversion potential here because uh, the channel values are buck 20. So I'm just using this for demonstration and test purposes. But you see the spread came through here, that which would then set our lower trigger break flag, which is then set to yes. And basically the system monitors the spread until it touches and crosses through the lower trigger channel again and this is where our trade was entered so it's gone along euro dollar here we're using uh, an opposite band reversion target so reversion target is here ob means opposite band so we're waiting for this spread to cross back through the mean and then touch that upper channel that upper trigger channel there and that will take us out of the trade so i'm going to just put this into monitoring mode and then I'll fast forward it so that you can see this in action. Okay traders, we've now seen the spread revert to the upper channel but the system won't close the trade because it's negative. So that's one thing version 4.0 will not do, it will not close a trade which has got a negative PL. So it'll wait until the profit is greater than zero uh, until it closes the trade. So we'll just carry on waiting and just watching this spread evolution. So what we've got here folks is I'm looking at the Euro dollar M1 chart and you can see how that chart corresponds to this spread here which is made up of the Euro, Euro Yen and Euro dollar. And if you actually turn the chart into a line graph and then get rid of these moving averages. You will see, hey presto, that the spread is virtually a carbon copy of the euro dollar price action, hence the reason why you can trade a synthetic pair. However, <laughs> it's not going quite our way at the moment. You can see the actual price action is going down. So our entry here was not great. Um, but we can stick with it and just follow it, see what happens. Okay, folks, so you've seen this. Uh, if you're still watching, congratulations. Um, you can see this M1 chart here. Let's go to M5 here so you can see that a bit more clearly. So. Put this M5 chart into a line graph, and you can see basically it's exactly the same. This spread here, which is made up of the euro, yen, and dollar yen, is identical pretty much to the euro dollar pair. And we used a delayed entry system that we traded off M1. So, another second. So, we came in. Here, after the spread broke through the channel, unfortunately, it carried on, went up a little bit, but then weakened, which is where we are now, we're in a sort of corrective phase now. If I move this to M5, though, you can see we've got more to go. So what this does is it basically pushes out our reversion target. But what I need to do, I need to make sure that the system is capable of trading on M5, so I just go to my interface and go to trade on time frame controls and click M5 and this will now engage the M5 time frame which you've seen being highlighted there so hopefully this will make this trade worth our while 
we're using an opposite band reversion target. So we're looking to go from, from the where the spread is now all the way up to this upper band up here. It may take some time, but that's what trading is all about. I'm just looking at the euro dollar chart at the moment, and you can see it's uh, this is on the M30 30 minute chart. I mean, it's seriously range bound. I mean, it's just kind of a load of crap, really. Talking about 13 pips, pretty much swing. Uh, it's a shocking um, example in terms of looking to demonstrate. However, it is what it is. Uh, there's just no volatility here whatsoever. So that's why we're seeing just this, you know, uh, really, really, really weak price action. There's nothing behind this whatsoever. Uh, although saying that we're coming up to one just gone come up to 110 so there may be some economic news data coming out which could make things get a bit more interesting but certainly from a a, uh, a volatility perspective it's just uh, yeah there's nothing going on here um, we can analyze the if we look at the ATR the average true range we can see on an hourly basis you can see how the currency pair has just basically died in terms of action. So you can see, looking at it, this is the four hourly ATR you've seen here. Typically on a four hour basis, you're gonna get around about 30 pips of movement on the euro dollar. And at the moment, uh, well the last four hours it was at 25. And at the moment, this is a, a forming bar, but it's again about 24. So, you know, it, it, it's pretty lifeless at the moment, which is not great for a demo, but there we go. It's kind of useful to hopefully show you guys how things work. So recapping, we're, we're really, all we're looking to do is we're trying to, we're trying to wait for this spread. This is our entry point here. And we entered actually on the M1 time frame. So let's go back to the M1 time frame on the ARP chart and Let's just find where it was. So that's our entry here. I'm just going to put a vertical, a horizontal line through our entry point so we can then reference it. So yeah, you can see the way the spreads came back up, tested our entry point again, went, you know, didn't even go profitable, didn't break through the spread. And then, then basically the pair has weakened and it looks like it's doing it again. But again, looking at it on the higher time frames poor price action it's kind of useful to see how the actual synthetic pair that you're trading relates to the spread though this is this is important stuff um, irrespective of whether this this trade goes well or not this is very useful in terms of just watching how the spread evolves in relation to the actual synthetic pair in this case which is created in many cases you may not get a synthetic pair if you're trading indices or commodities you won't be able to watch the underlying asset which is created by the ARB uh, in terms of evolution of price but you can kind of see that in the spread anyway the spread tells you everything you need to know this is interesting folks so look at this is actually very useful from an education point of view. If you look at the this hourly chart here, this is our entry point, and you can see why it's, so it's really important when you're doing this ARB trading that you bear in mind where you are in the grand scheme of things. So we basically sort of, we went long, because we're trading on a silly short time frame like M1, really just testing the delayed entry system, but. I don't really care about about whether this this trade makes any money or not. I'm I'm more interested in the principle here. This is what I'm trying to get at. So our hourly chart, you can see here that our entry points here where the DOS is FXB entry, which was kind of way up near the upper trigger level, which is basically a short area. This is where you want to go short on the system. So it just goes to show that getting down into the lower time frames is quite misleading in many many times because you might be looking at say an m5 chart like this and you say okay well you know we we went along there but in the grand scheme of things going up to the higher time frames this is where it was 
on the hourly spread, it was up here. So it's it's kind of you need to bear this in mind. If you are going to start playing around uh, in the really short time frames, just be careful. Just be careful what you know. Keep an eye on where the spread is on the upper time frames. In strong trending environments, you can kind of get away with this a bit better. But this this price action is really weak. Uh, you can see that from the trend data here. It's just we've got stationary trend status on M5 15 half an hour hourly. On the four hourly, it's falling. So let's just look at the four hourly spread. And yeah, you see, you've got a falling trend here. So we've we've gone long. Uh, that's because we're only filtering on the M15, M30, and H1 timeframes. So again, it's kind of worth thinking about locking in some higher time frames. We've got a bit of contradiction on the daily though. It's rising on the daily, but only just. So it's kind of let's just put some candles in there, and then we can if we look at the data window. We can actually analyze the moving average. So the spread calculation is based upon the last three candles. So if we just mouse over that candle, you can see the moving average is at 0.1136, and then 0.1134, and then 0.1131. So the system has, has, has calculated that the spread, uh, sorry, the moving average on the daily chart is in fact rising but it's only very very slightly so let's go back and see where we are we see it looks like things are beginning to go a little bit in our favor so we've seen the spread beginning to retrace now coming back towards the mean but i don't know how long we're going to have to wait for anything interesting to really happen here oh, that's a little bit better a little bit more positive seeing a quite a bullish candle on the five minute chart there so I've just I've changed this chart to trade on M5 now using an opposite bound reversion target so we're looking to exit here which gets which would give us not much of a profit because obviously our entry was poor our entries here which is reasonably close to upper band by going even higher on the time frame so if I go to M15 just waiting for a tick Still, reversion potential is quite weak. Um, we're only using 0.4 as our STD multiple, so we could actually go to M5 and then go back down and then actually just widen our channels a little bit. So, if we broaden our channel, we now see the reversion potential going positive. Um, we've got still very, very little. If I go to one standard deviation, going to give us a reversion potential of $2.50 so you know minuscule amount but this is just all about the principle that we're trying to get across here but if you look at this look at the way that the actual spread is touching the channels last time you saw the spread break through this upper channel at one standard deviation which is actually in actual fact two standard deviations um, was at 915 this morning and now it's 120 so that would be quite an optimistic target to go for based upon what the spread has been doing. It's been very, very, you know, it is in a stationary, it's exhibiting stationary behavior, but with hardly any uh, real movement. You know, but going back to what we were talking about with the ATR, uh, it's picking up a little bit at the moment, but, uh, you know, for, the, for a while the ATR has been, you know, pitifully small. I mean, you know, you're looking at sort of in these time frames over here sorry these candles i should say look at that i mean you know we, we are talking about uh three pips and five minutes on the range i mean you know it's really not happening three pips now here we're getting four pips last five minutes so uh yeah it's really lackluster folks um to be honest i'm i'm not going to bother um boring you any further with this but hopefully the, there was some value in talking through how the synthetic pair maps over to uh, a direct currency pair which you can see in the case of the euro dollar watching how the spread evolves over time in relation uh, to 
the actual Forex pair data and looking at the reversion targets and obviously the most important thing is realizing where you are in the grand scheme of things going up to the daily chart here or in fact hourly four hourly in fact daily let's say our entry not being optimum because this is really a kind of remember what the spread is trying to do the spread is the net the idea behind pairs trading or reversion based trading is the spread will always tend to gravitate back to its moving average so you see time time again breaks away comes back comes back breaks away etc 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 but more importantly on the in the recently today we've seen quite a lot of oscillation around it and we've got a non-optimum entry here because we were entering on an m1 chart which is misleading because it doesn't really give you the big picture so if you are going to start trading on m1 lock in loads of extra time frames for trend filtering and, and probably don't don't tra trade a stationary environment on a very short time frame like this because there's just no bacon in it as you can see it's just you know you it's all really you know the profit is eaten up by the spread cost we've got a one buck 62 or 67 spread cost and, and just no reversion potential so hopefully that is illuminating for you sorry it's been such a long video but i'll fast forward through all the bits where you've just been chilling out and watching it thanks